Hola, hola, mis amigos. Today we're going to talk about Follow the Drinking Gourd. So I read the story, Follow the Drinking Gourd. You can see that link in the instructions. Uh, and we're kind of talking about uh, slavery and going north toward freedom. And when we talk about slavery, we're connecting to um, social studies and how uh, we've come so far in our history as well. Um, so follow the drinking gourd is a wonderful reminder of how far we have come and to um, respect um, all people and understand the challenges that they have faced. Um, I like follow the drinking gourd because it was a symbolic poem uh, or song that they use um, to help free the slaves who are going north toward freedom. So the drinking gourd uh, was actually the Big Dipper, which is a constellation up in the stars. Uh, there's the Big Dipper and there's the Little Dipper. So the Little Dipper also contains Polaris, the North Star that also helped guide slaves toward the North. So they would look for the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper and they look for that North Star so that they could travel that direction uh, to the North because if you remember the North, uh, you were not allowed to have slaves and they would be free there. And we always seek to have freedom and equality uh, for all, of course. So the constellations, you may want to add those in your artwork as well, especially that North Star, the brightest, because it's a reminder that the North was freedom. Uh, first, we're going to get a square piece of paper and we're using a square because freedom quilts uh, were very important in terms of being a symbol uh, or represent freedom for the slaves, uh, but also the people that were helping the slaves in that Underground Railroad would post up a freedom quilt and that would allow slaves to know that this was a safe place or a safe stop on the Underground Railroad. Um, so you'll create a two inch border with a ruler. So you're going to have to use some math skills and math tools. Uh, and actually all quilt makers have to use a lot of math and measurements. Um, so in the demonstration video, I'll show you how to make tick marks and create the border with the ruler. Uh, but for now, just know that you'll have a border frame um, that will be two inches and we're going to measure that. Um, and quilts were used to tell like the story of freedom as well and the drinking gourd story. So uh, you can tell stories through illustrations in books, but also on quilts. And that's exactly what they did. Um, so once you have your two inch border, you're going to make uh, two inch boxes as well around your border frame. Um, those are like quilt squares. And then there's a big square in the middle as well that we're going to um, illustrate part of the story. So in-person learners, I've printed off images from the book. Online learners, you can pause the book in that other link that when I read it, you could pause to look, uh, or you could kind of just make a landscape with the Big Dipper and Little Dipper. You can see I have the North Star there. It's the biggest of all the stars in the sky. Um, but I had the family from the story that was escaping slavery to freedom. Uh, because it's just a good reminder of our history and Black History Month in particular um, as we fight for freedom for all, uh, even to this day. Um, we want equality and freedom and respect so that we're all soaring together with the same goals in mind. Uh, I love the symbols in the Underground Railroad uh, because it was kind of like a secret code. Um, so these symbols were used around the border frame in the quilts as uh, symbols. So, for instance, if they saw a quilt with this symbol, it meant a crossroads. So keep going and travel to the crossroads in Cleveland, Ohio, nicknamed Hope. Uh, this Underground Railroad station was the last stop where slaves would board a boat to Canada. So if they saw this symbol, they would know that they were close to freedom and uh, being able to have a new life. Uh, this symbol represents a log cabin, and that means if you see this symbol on a quilt outside uh, a cabin, 
hey, congrats, you found new friends who are friends of slaves that are going to help you to the next stop. It's called a safe house uh, before you move on to the next step of the Underground Railroad. Um, and then this one's a great symbol for the North Star. Um, look to the skies to help you navigate the way. Follow the North Star to Canada far north. Uh, and then I love this symbol too. It's just so fascinating the different directions the triangles are going. And those triangles actually represent geese uh, because Canadian geese, they fly north. They migrate north in that direction uh, toward Canada. And that's exactly the same direction the um, slaves were going to get freedom. So they could follow the geese as well. And I just like that symbol a lot. Um, there's some other uh, secret codes of the quilt, um, like a bear paw, um, a sailboat is coming up, um, and then some of the same, a wagon wheel, uh, kind of a symbol that, okay, there's a wagon coming up, you want to hide in that wagon, and then we'll take you to the next step to the log cabin or the safe house. Uh, these flying geese are kind of fun because they did them in different colors, and actually these are St. John's Red Wing colors too. Uh, you might want to incorporate that in your quilt as well. Um, so again, you can pause it here if you want more symbols. You could pause it over here if you want more symbols. Uh, or you could do a little research on your own with your Chromebook as well. So here's some real examples of freedom quilts. Do you notice the scrap pieces and the symbols? So if you would like go back, you would kind of see those symbols here. Um, like the geese right here, I see those right away and they're kind of scattered throughout. Um, like the North Star, Polaris there from the Little Dipper. Um, the, oh, there's the sailboat. So you can find all sorts of different symbols in these freedom quilts. And again, these were kind of hung uh, for the slaves to see and would understand these symbols to know if it was safe and if they were getting close to the North. All right. You're going to add some of those symbols to your border frame on your quilt square. So I use different symbols here, a variety of symbols. Um, you can repeat symbols if you want, if you want to kind of do the same ones or uh, have all your symbols in the four corners. You could kind of make a pattern in any way you want. I want to just go every other square. I did a symbol from the quilt and then left the other squares blank. You can kind of do it however you would like and any pattern you'd like or order you'd like. Um, so the again, these symbols and freedom quilts used back in the 1800s, um, phenomenal stuff, awesome history and social studies. And then you can see that I outlined all my pencil with Sharpie marker so it stands out, it's a little more bold. Uh, I even put a little owl in the tree there looking at the North Star. All right. Uh, last step, um, in your other squares that you didn't put symbols in, you could cut scraps. You could make symbols with the scraps, but just like the quilt makers back then and still today use fabric scraps and just kind of piece it together. It's a collage. So we're collaging as well by finding scrap pieces of paper, cutting and gluing. Instead of sewing, we're gluing, but you can see on some of these symbols, I made like little stitch marks to look like uh, they were sewn on. So you can use texture and line to make the illusion of it being sewn together, just like a real quilt would be. And then once I had everything collaged on there, I actually used watercolor to uh, fill in the landscape and the um, people from the story and the sky and even the background of some of these scraps as well. Some I left white, but some I filled in with watercolor paint and actually I used some contrasting colors like blue and orange, purple, yellow, red, green, some warm colors, some cool colors. So uh, you can even use a little color theory mixed in your freedom quilt. So lots of knowledge being utilized here today. Um, here's some student examples. Uh, so we kind of hung the quilts together like it was all one big piece. Um, and we also talked about uh, the Presidente Abraham Lincoln who 
um, gave the Emancipation Proclamation to free slaves all over the United States so they no longer had to follow the drinking gourd to uh, freedom. They were free everywhere. And then here's an example of a freedom quilt that includes Harriet Tubman, the most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad, freeing so many slaves. Uh, what a hero and icon she is. Um, and you can see uh, like music from the song Follow the Drinking Gourd and almost like the illustrations from the book are included here and symbols of course around the border frame in different colors and you can see the different patched pieces and you can even if you look close see the stitches uh, from when they sewed that quilt together. So maybe you even want Harriet Tubman as a symbol on your quilt. So. I hope you enjoyed learning about Follow the Drinking Gourd, the Underground Railroad, and how important it is, uh, our history for freedom uh, for all. So keep these things in the front of your mind, uh, and hopefully you can be inspired to create your Freedom Quilt Square. I cannot wait to see your symbols and colors and inspirational work. Adios, amigos.